What's up y'all, it's your girl Sang, and today we're gonna be reacting to another Halloween video. Last time we saw how an ex-Satanist explained why Christians shouldn't be celebrating Halloween. Today, we're gonna be looking at the same thing except from an ex-witch perspective. This is from its Supernatural Network. So let's go ahead and get into it and see what an ex-witch has to say about Christians celebrating Halloween. So how does a nice believer that loves God with 100% of, uh, uh, of her, her life become a witch? Why would you even want to? Yeah, well, that's a great question. And I'm so excited to tell this part of my story. So yeah, like you said, you know, I love the Lord. Um, there was a time before I was radically transformed that I was living in darkness. So for about nine years of my life, I did so many drugs and was on the streets. But around the age of 13, even though I was in a Christian home, I beca became extremely depressed. I was bullied at school. I didn't have any self-worth. There was a lot of abuse happening in the home. And so I remember going to a friend's house because my mother didn't allow us to watch anything. She would say, I don't want anything demonic on my TV. That meant Smurfs, that meant The Simpsons. I'm hey. dating myself right now. That hey, smart mom, you know, A plus mom right there. I don't know how you went away from that, but moms was trying to lead you the right way. I meant anything that had rebellion or sorcery, she would not allow us to watch. But I knew if I went to a friend's house, I could watch whatever I wanted to. And so I went to this friend's house and the movie came out in 1996. It was called The Craft. And this movie was about four witches in high school. And I watched the movie and I was completely overtaken by the movie, meaning I wanted to become like these witches. What, what were you looking for with this power? Uh, uh, did you ever know? Power, control control in a, in a situation in a life that I felt like I had no control. And so it looked like mm -hmm. to me, these four witches, they were going to their high school and they were making these bullies pay for picking on them. They were mm -hmm. getting, you know, people to like them and getting all the things that they wanted. And so I looked at that like, I want that mm -hmm. too. Uh, by the way, I hear the term a lot, Wicca. What is Wicca? Wick, yes, Wicca, Wiccan, um, Pagan. Um, beliefs. These are people that practice witchcraft and they believe in there is not one God. There is many gods, goddesses, um, that earthly things can have spirits like a tree can have a spirit and animals can have a spirit. And so all of these things have power and they were all kind of connected as one. And so that's in a nutshell, and there's many different categories of that, but in a nutshell, that's what it is. They don't believe in, in, some may believe in God, like we believe in God, but they believe he's not the only one, that there are all sorts of other gods, and in fact, that we are also gods. Um, well, how did you leave Wicca or, or, or witchcraft? How did you uh get dissatisfied uh and, and uh i would have to believe that you open yourself up to powerful familiar spirits mm -hmm. through witchcraft mm -hmm. absolutely well yeah it's funny i was laughing because it seemed like he was struggling to even like there was probably a lot he wanted to say and he was struggling to get it out but Y'all gotta now I've gotta realize, man, playing with this, like the, the ex Satanist was saying, you open your door to a lot of things that you don't want in your life. It's messed up that it could just be opened on its own depending what's happening in your life if you're not paying attention, right? And I have a story I'm gonna tell um in a different video about something that happened recently. But prior to me even becoming Christian. Um, something that happened, I said this in the video when I decided to become a Christian. For months on end, I didn't purposely do anything crazy to open a door, yet it was a time period it was just so dark and broken around me, and I was lost, that I did feel, um, I, I, I believe it was a demon, I felt one messing with me. For months on end, it, it got to the point I couldn't sleep. I was having trouble sleeping. It really wasn't until I started hearing scripture being spoken in my house every day 
from a creator that he just decided to be Christian at that time. So then him, because people are just randomly asking him questions, and he's answering stuff back, and then he's just reading stuff on screen, that started blasting through my household. And then that also led me to listening to a podcast from a rabbi, and he's just speaking about the Torah all the time. You know, once all that started being spoken in my house, all of that started stopping, like all of it. I don't think that's a coincidence either. So when people open themselves up to things like this, you don't know what you letting into your life. And then you gotta think about this was purposeful. What happened to me was not purposeful. I don't think I purposely did anything to let that happen, right? I was just going through a rough period of, of time in my life. I wasn't doing drugs, I wasn't doing alcohol. I was just, I was super depressed, you know? Like it was just, so to purposely have all this happen, y'all be careful out there, right? Y'all just be really careful. I'll tell you, it started real innocent. Like I see today, people getting into having healing crystals and mm -hmm. burning sage and uh, look. That was one thing too, when I was not a Christian, I, you can't burn no sage in my house. I remember one day my boyfriend, his uh, older brother, he was burning it in his car because he said it smelled good. And when we first moved into this house, uh, he gave the stick or whatever, he gave one to my boyfriend and my boyfriend showed it to me. And he was just like, yeah, this smelled really good. I'm gonna burn this later once we get everything in the house. And I was like, no, you're not. <laughs> Are you crazy? You're not about to burn that in my house. Do you know that's a, a door? You have to open up a door. You don't even know what you're playing with. And he's like, Okay, yeah, you're paranoid. This just smells good. So he went out to the truck to get something. When I tell y'all, I picked that up and I went outside. There was like two trash cans outside. And I like threw it into the trash can. And there was like water was at the bottom of the trash can too. So it couldn't even be salvaged. I threw that in the trash can. He didn't even know I did it. <laughs> and it was crazy. He don't even watch these videos. He told me he does not watch my Christian videos. So he's never going to know. <laughs> unless he was capping and he really do watch my videos. But, um while we were moving stuff in you know how you break boxes down and throw stuff away i i put all the trash i was the one taking the trash out while he was still like building things and putting stuff together just that he never asked where it went he never asked where it went i was nah nah you're not doing that in my house you're crazy looking for an energy or a power that was going to help me to just uh be happier in life and so something that started very innocent i would get the spell books and you know just do these little little things i didn't think were a big deal became deeper and darker and to the point where like on halloween we'd be sitting around in a circle summoning up these deities gods goddesses to come which mm -hmm. they, we know oh, they're no. demons in the christian world to come into the the place where we were and to enter into our bodies and give us power. Oh, and so nah. the way that I got out of it, most people probably think I'm gonna say that God just came down and just like wrecked my life and just power came on me. I actually got so deep into it that the things that started happening around the house, it was like, the only way I can describe it was like a, living in a haunted house. I was so terrified of how deep I had gotten into it and what began to happen that I actually got out of it um, without even yet encountering God, which happened a little bit later, I got out of it because I remember my mom saying, you don't need to be involved in that stuff and mm -hmm. it'll take you out. And I remember going, I can't mm -hmm. do this anymore. I don't want to have, I don't want to practice spells anymore. And, and it took a while for the Lord to really grip my heart, but I got out of it because I felt like I was living in a haunted house. And if I didn't get out of it, that these spirits would kill me in my sleep. Hmm. What? That's that's wild. So she got out of it for the horrible aspect of it, which I don't blame her. That's why I don't mess with that stuff, right? Like, there, there's, there's so much. Because I, I thought about that too when I was thinking about becoming a Christian. Like, because you think about your eternal life, like your afterlife and whatnot. And I was like, man, I don't even like spooky stuff here. You think I want to deal with spooky BS and being tortured and, and scary stuff for an eternity? No, thank you. Okay, give me, sign me up. Give me the Bible. I'll be the best Christian ever, bro. Like, I, that was my mindset first coming in. Now I'm like, <laughs> like, I truly believe in, in all of that. But I really thought about that before becoming Christian. I was just like, no, nah, man, you, mm -mm. I don't even like that here. Well, um, you, in addition to drugs, you became a cutter. 
Yeah. Uh, what what causes so, uh, a young person to become a cutter and how bad was it? For me, it was very bad. Uh, it started off in, in high school. Uh, I came home one day, I was bullied. I was just having a terrible day. You know, being bullied and picked on at school and then coming home to a, a place that's supposed to be safe and then being bullied abused and picked on by your parents and your family it's just like a one-two punch and the enemy he he knew what he was doing by setting me up that way and so i saw it as a a, a way to escape there was so mm. much pain inside i thought mm. i have to let the pain out and if i cut maybe a little bit of that pain can escape and really uh, many times sid you know what i would hear i would hear a whisper like this go cut yourself cut yourself Cut yourself. It was that like was I those, was being... that was those demons. Yes. They, they were they were inside, outside. Yes. And, and they only have one purpose: use you and destroy you. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. See, when I went through my depression, so the very first day, I, I said this another out video um, is alcohol is sin, right? I don't like the taste of alcohol. I was so upset. I was just kind of like, "F it, I'm a I'm a drink or whatever." So I knocked back, we had like a bottle of tequila or something, bro. This is how you know I don't drink. I don't even know what the bottle was that we had at the time. It was a rocks drink, whatever he has. It was my boyfriend's bottle, I, I don't drink. Um, whatever that was, I remember it was, it was dark. Mind you, somebody who hates spooky stuff, I just stumbled in the dark to the kitchen, didn't even think twice about it, grabbed the bottle and just like knocked it back, right? Woke up the very next day with like the worst hangover and I was just like, see, this is why I don't drink. Because it was also nasty. It tasted horrible. So I'm just like, not only was the taste garbage, now I feel like garbage. I hated it. And I didn't do like when she's talking about the drugs and cutting yourself. I didn't do anything. My issue, I had like some deep anger, which led to me being depressed and I I was so headstrong on that. That might have been my door opening to like um, bad stuff, right? Because I noticed once all that started happening, that's when that, not long, I think a week or two of me being just deep in that anger and that sadness is when all that stuff started happening. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it's probably different ways to open that door and you have to be very mindful. That's why they say you're supposed to read your Bible every day. You're supposed to pray. Um, I actually didn't read my Bible today. I woke up, it's like raining and hailing. It's been dark all day, just rain and hail nonstop back and forth. And these type of days just make me sleepy and cozy. Um, the plan is to at least read one chapter of my Bible tonight, but yeah. Uh, oh, Bible study is actually in a little bit, so I, I'll, I'll do that too. But yeah, that's that's probably with how the doorway opened for me. Cause I do have enough, I still had enough sense where I'm just like, I'm not gonna destroy myself, right? I was thinking about destroying somebody else when, when I'm telling you all that anger. So that's probably how that, that gateway opened cause you're not supposed to do those things either. But yeah, you really gotta be on it. You gotta be on your P's and Q's. You really gotta be ab about it to try to keep everything at bay. You know what I'm saying? And at one point I remember looking at my arm and counting the cuts. I had 56 cuts all up and down my arm. My arm looked like it cuts. went through a shredder. It was something I did almost every single hmm. day. So you left that, but mm -hmm. God's hand was on your life. And you, how, how did you make the full, I mean, you're such a radical, believer in the Messiah today, that when I hear your background, I say, tilt, it doesn't compute. Right. What was, what did you, what was the process? After about nine years of witchcraft, which led of course to drug addiction. Nine years. I was addicted to meth and heroin, in and out of jails. I mean, the whole thing. At one point I was living in people's sheds in their backyards, like oh. an animal hiding, using meth, just, it was insane. And I got pregnant with my daughter who is 12 today. And I got to the lowest point in my life. And I remember just screaming out to God, God help me with the most gut wrenching scream. And I was just done. I, I, 
I had not eaten in days, not showered in days. I had no home, no life, no job, nothing. And I was a drug addict and I was pregnant. And I cried out to God. And I'm, I'm, I'm telling you at that moment, I knew God hears me. He's gonna come and rescue me. And sure enough, I remember hearing just a big old knock on the door a few days later, a big ginormous knock, which you know is the police when you hear that kind of knock. And they came in to this hotel that I was in using drugs and uh, they arrested me and I, I took that long drive to jail and the lady ministered to me in the car, the police officer. She literally ministered to me. I don't even know who this lady is. She just said, you have a purpose. You know, God's got a good plan for your life. You don't need that. And I remember her. I don't remember her name or anything. And I'm telling you, God used her to really minister to me. And I never went back that was meant from to that point on. That was um, meant to happen. Well, I'm, I'm, you, know, you know what? The most amazing phenomena I observe, uh, you know, I'm, I observe things. I feel things. The minute you opened your mouth about God revealing himself to you, mm -hmm. the presence of God was on those words. The same presence of God that came on you is coming on the people that are yeah. listening. Uh, but uh, I have to go back to the witchcraft just for a moment. And I have to ask you, what does witchcraft have to do with Halloween? Here we go. Halloween is just trick or treat, children having fun, oh. costume uh, parties, uh, Christians and non-Christians alike celebrating. The Christians can say, we don't think anything about uh, uh, the, the, the bad things from Halloween. But let's start out for basics. What is Halloween? All right. So you guys remember from the ex-Satanist video, he said that Halloween is their night, right? He got married on Halloween. He baptized his child to the dark side on that day or something. Um, he said they put curses on the candy. Um, doors was open. It was, it was an easy way to get your, your children's souls and to curse them and all this other crap, right? So we know that it's bad. He already told us why it was bad from his point of view when he used to be on that side of the fence. So now she's going to tell us how it, how it works for witches because she said earlier in her story. They used to be in the forest, all huddled up on Halloween, casting spells and giving their bodies over to just whoever, right? To any demon that had taken, which is messed up. But let's see what she has to say. Well, Halloween is a celebration of the dead. And it started out with Celtic Druids years and years and years and years ago. This whole entire holiday or day was created to summons up the god of, of the dead and they would they would basically call on this the people who had passed on who were in the graves for their spirits to come and roam through the earth on this day that they believe that there was a veil that was thin crossing over from summer into the next month they believe that that veil was thin going into the next season and so because the veil was thin between the spirit world and the earth world that the two could collide and so that's what they wanted it was all steeped in witchcraft it was all steeped in communicating with the dead that's the original root and origin of this holiday so much so that they believe that this happened and they felt this happening that they would disguise themselves in costumes so that these spirits that were roaming around the earth on this day that they wouldn't try to take vengeance out on them as a human mm. that they would the spirits would see them dressed up as a, a ghost and they would pass the human by and go to the next one and so that's where we incorporate costumes and dressing up that's why a lot of times when you see costumes although you see nice angels and these things but most of them are scary they are horrific they're ghouls and goblins and all the things that bring fear one of my commenters also told me that the Druids, it was something about child sacrifice on that day as well. I'm not too well versed into that. If you guys know better than me, let me know in the comment section down below. But that's what was told to me from somebody else in the comment section on the ex Satanist video. And, and by the way, if there's one spirit that we've seen rear its ugly head because of COVID, it's the spirit of fear. 
We right. don't need anything in addition Come on. Uh, to, to bring fear on people. Right. Uh, but uh, do you think or no? I'm just curious. Do, wit do witches use Halloween as a point of contact to uh, either recruit people or harm people? Yes, absolutely. Now, I will, I will tell you this. For me in my life, when I was practicing witchcraft, I wasn't around witches and warlocks who were doing what I would call like evil things. At least in my view, it wasn't too bad, like sacrifices, killing animals, even kidnapping children, all of these things. I wasn't around that group, but I did know, which most people know, that that thing does happen. This is a day that witches and Satanists look forward to, like Christians look forward to Resurrection Sunday or Christmas, celebrating Jesus. This is a holiday that people are, are witches, Satanists, people that are doing sorcery and magic, they are on high alert. They will rest all that whole week so that at that night they can be up throughout the night practicing spells, the craft, even roaming around. You notice that if you look at statistics that night, there's more kidnappings, there's more uh, people going missing, That's there's nice. more crime, nice. there's more murders that happen. That night is like the devil's play play night and and even the person that uh, started the satanic church he's passed on now but he said he loves that Christians allow their children to participate and worship the devil at least one night of the year that's what the guy said in the ex-satanist video even her mentioning she she was like I didn't hang around those type of witches and warlocks he even mentioned that he was trained by high-ranking warlocks and whatnot so all oh, that's connected all that's connected. we shouldn't be doing that at all what I'm gonna do, due to time, I'm gonna make this part one. We're gonna end it right here, and I'm gonna see y'all in part two.